Yeah, uh, we are here at Robrands. This is the man, <laughs> my friend Brian, for quite some time. And this is Ellie, also another vet and a farmer as well. I have talked about this many, many times that you people, we need to learn, qualify, but go back and be a farmer. I'm really impressed and I'm really very happy that many people have come on board. Uh, you know him, you know me, but I'm introducing to you this baby. He's a young, strong, young man. Because he's telling me that he has enough of hay. Many people have been having square miles of land. You've done a lot of farming. But when you ask a billion from a farmer, he sees as if it's a, a very big money. But people will have small land, uh, but having good output. Me having a square mile, I think I'll be having over 10,000 plus animals. But there is many people in the country here which have a square mile, but they only have 100. Not one, like five. Aha, you get it. So what am I trying to explain today is utilization of what we have. The way to go in this farming is really going into feed and genetics. Then the management is all about you. But if the moment you decide to do those stuff in your life, you can never go wrong. Me, him, and him. If we have a square mile, maybe it's for our father. But we can afford to have 10 acres or 15 acres. Yeah. The way to go now is how do we use how do you utilize? Aha, the small portion of land. Many of us, we have many youth who really can afford to have what we have. But... Um, they are not utilizing it. Why? They have no idea. Because people are scaring them. You can't use that small piece of land. You can't do goats on zero grazing. You cannot do a feed load. You can't make money. But here for us, we believe that we can make it. I'm happy with Brian because last time we talked, we said we need more other youth to come on board. He's a strong I'm the first one, I'm the first one I think. <laughs> <laughs> come on there is more, come but on he is yeah, very, very serious, by the way. For us, what we are doing now, or the reason why we are here, we are here because of pastures. We are here because of nutrition. Because we know the core point of farming is all about pastures or nutrition, then genetics. Genetics converts into muscles. The end point of this is dollars, and yeah. that is the muscles. So that is our struggle as for now. I'm telling you, we started some time back. You've seen me with Brian for a long time. Uh, you know, posting, having different sizes. Yeah. Look how he's looking. <laughs> I know he's doing some good work. And uh, next time when you see him, you can see him a big man. <laughs> now, uh, I'm happy uh, this man is taking another level. Today he has given me uh, a mineral block. I think it's you before? It's yes. It's so these are rock rock. And you know, this guy is telling me they tested his mineral block and it is 18. Is it 10% good protein? 18% good cool protein. You remember, I always explain to you that the moment you do farming in an area that you don't even know the kind of pasture you're dealing with, the conversion of muscle in an animal needs a protein yeah. and, of course, needs carbohydrates. Yes. So, there is minerals here which speeds up digestion of the animal such that it converts the grass into muscles and there is a protein itself. You get it? This is done here, Protein where we are right energy, now. The guys are manufacturing there, you know. The plant is here. <laughs> this thing shouldn't have to be, you know, <laughs> too big or what, what. It's only the science and the concoction that you are really doing. So I'm really so happy that Brian is doing this. That's why I go back and say that you people, don't hate the people you're dealing with in the fraternity. Yeah, that we have to work well. together as a team. Your yeah. happiness is our happiness. Let me tell you one thing. The reason why we have failed to export meat, we have failed to export grasses, and we are the pearl of Africa, is fighting each other. If you're seeing somebody is moving forward, you're trying to knock him off. No, that is not going to help. People, Many people have been doing pasture farming here. They have been doing animal farming here. But how come? that we have not moved at a high speed. But as for now, we, the young generations, we have, we have decided work. to come up together. And that's why you see somebody is talking about pastures, we have them. Somebody is talking about meat, goats, we have them. But in a small quantity. But we need more people to be on board come on, and have work. many people. Brian, this is a very good thing. I'm really so happy that we are doing have a touch. Hey, you can see how heavy it is. 
because the thing is even serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a progress. He's, he has started like this. But I'm sure he's going to progress and do something better. Don't think that those people who are doing this and get it maybe in Netherlands or where, they did not come up from their stomach of the mothers doing that. They started the way we started. And that is where they are. We have started this. I want to see Uganda in the next five years. We, the young people, we are going to be the leading farmers. For us, we are not ready to be employed, but we are ready to employ other people. And we also advise the young generation that the moment you get the capital, exit. Go and do your own farming, be your own boss, own other people, but let also learn from you. Go and do something. Brian, those are my words. It was just words of appreciating, give, giving them deep breath, and then emphasizing on the point that this is a rainy season. People are supposed to be planting, preparing for the dry spell. Yes. People in Chihura called me asking me for hay because their animals are dying. The dry spell is long. This guy is doing his farming in Zimbabwe. He's yeah, one of the yeah. driest places. And he's talking about a thousand bells plus. So you guys, you can talk to these people as well the way I have talked to you. But I'm really very happy and this is my progress okay so um uh, thank you very much uh, my brother uh, hamisi i think you have been seeing us uh, together we have moved a long the long way uh hamisi came to me when he was about to leave his boss and he told me brian i would want to go and uh, start something of myself and i said sir please move and go me what i will do i will make sure that you have the pastures on the farm go and start and the sky is not even the limit. I, I don't need to talk about much where he has been and where he is now because you have been seeing him. So in, in this journey, uh, as Ami said, actually he brought me a deal. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but why is he here? He has brought me a deal. Uh, he's going to give me some, uh, some millions of money. But uh, that aside now, um, as we progress, as, uh, as you know, there is no way how we can succeed in livestock farming without feed. There is practically no way. And when we talk about feeds, we talk about the quality. Because we are looking at those nutrients that are going to be converted by our machines, which are the animals that you have on your farms, to give us the products. That could be milk, that could be beef that we're talking about. So there is what we call the forages, or, the, or what I always call the basal feed. What animals consume in large quantities? And there's also concentrates or what animals need to consume in small quantities. The importance of concentrates is one, to give uh, more nutrients that have not been able to be gotten from uh, the, the best of it. Now, uh, along the way, I planned and I decided to do a multinutrient mineral block. Other than just having a mineral block only, which has uh, minerals, I decided to make sure that we also have high protein and high energy in the block. So that what animals have not been able to get from the grass and from the field, wherever they are, whether you have animals and you're letting them feed by themselves, what they have not been able to get to give you the product. And you, you must be able to have it here. I have spent one and a half years doing the research on this block making sure I was actually part of the people that uh, put the machine that you saw inside there trying to compact. Because these are materials which are compacted to this small thing and they can be able to weigh five kilograms. So by the time we came with a machine that can really compact that and make sure that it has to come out with that. So we have tested this block, not only testing in a laboratory but also to our farm. And we have seen the progress. As far as milk is concerned, the moment you start using it, uh, you don't need to say much. And the results are one. going to be there. What? Sorry about this, but you, you hear what he said? He has tested it on his farm. If you visit his farm, they are feeding it. You get it? For us, we don't just research and leave it. Like no. the research that have been existing. We do something, we practically, practically put it on ground. You get it? So Brian has his own farm. He's a young farm and he has his own farm. We don't want to act like signposts, like the technocrats that have been existing, <laughs> yes, yes. showing you that That's when you fun. do farming, you will get rich. But a, the person teaching you how to do farming 
he doesn't even have a leg of an animal. We don't deal with that. Fran, sorry, but you can Yeah, yeah, sure. Like so when you go to my farm, this is what we're doing. This is the block we're using to get the milk. This is the block we're using to uh, fatten the animals. Um, when you take this and your goat starts feeding, you see, you see how the young ones are going to be getting more milk from the mothers and you're going to see how the body condition of those goats is going to improve because they're going to be getting enough nutrients that they need and you're going to see how the young ones are going to grow faster because of this. It is tested on our farm and also tested in the laboratories to understand exactly the nutrients that are there. And uh, we are going to put a sticker which is going to be showing uh, um, the nutrient levels in it and we're going to blend it very well and put it on market. So uh, my brother visited me today. I, I have given him some blocks <laughs> to, go, to go and uh, they are already given the pickup to yeah. go and test on his farm yeah. to go and put and put there. Yeah. You are going to see the I'll progress. Give, I'll give the marketing. As, as I say, yeah, it's going to do a lot of marketing. <laughs> as I say, with nutrition, you do not need to talk much. Yeah. Yeah. Once the animals are feeding on your on something you have brought on board, yeah. the results are paramount and the results are there. So I want to thank you so much as I want to give my brother a chance to uh, tell you something about what he's doing. I want to always thank you so much for always following me, always following my brother Hamisi. And we see all the appreciations you send to us and these keep us moving and moving. Thank you. So you can... Wow, that's, that's wonderful. Um, Our new youth yeah, on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, we are the upcoming one. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name's uh, Amkou Tagai Eri. I'm a student at Makai University. I'm doing veterinary medicine. I'm in year two. So today I happened to meet this gentleman who motivated me. I I, I joined Makai. I specified in veterinary. I, I did all these things of farming because of this young man. They motivated me, me as a young man. Really, you guys you should keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, uh, me. I'm a farmer. As you know, most of us we are farmers. Uh, I specify in the, in the, I grow Chloris Guyana. I have uh, like 100 square miles. I, I sorry, not 100, 1,000 acres of Chloris Guyana. I have this. I have enough stores. So I think I'm the leading producer of Chloris in Uganda. So in case you want anything, or what, or what orders, any kind of orders you want, they are available and they are good. My my bill ranges from 20 to 25 kgs. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I have. And you guys, that's good. And and you know, I was talking about that, that people who doesn't have capital, yeah. they can hire land. Yeah, exactly. Then after hiring yeah. the, the land, instead of doing maize, mm. let them do pasture. Yeah. Because there is people who have animals mm. and they have mm. no pasture. Mm. There is those people who have the land and they think land will be producing all the time. Now for me, Hamis has bulls, has goats, this one has bulls, me I have pasture. I'm going to supply now. Now, there is, there is something <laughs> that we, we need to know, uh, Hamis. Not everybody is going to come and do pastures. Not everybody is going to come and do animals. Yeah. But we, we, we work as a team as a together. Team. And I've been telling people, I've been telling people, especially people in uh, peri-urban areas, there is nothing as profitable as a peri-urban dairy farming. I've been telling people, you have one, two animals, the return of milk is at 2,000. So the, 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 the amount of money you put in and the amount of money that you get out you, you don't really compare with someone who's rentals. And people have lost money in a lot of things. So people who are in the urban, as long as they have guarantee where they are going to get the feed from, if we have so many entrepreneurs engaged in feed production, then we can be able to push uh, uh, the farming in Uganda very well. But as I said, my brother, we have to do our part. We have to show everyone what we are doing. Let people learn from us. Let people see what we are doing. Let those who want to come on board come on board. Let us who want, let those who want to find us moving come and move with us. Yes. But as we said, we are going to try and put a blip on the development of the livestock sector in this country. Thank and you so much. Information, if we come up together. We call many many people. Can we do? We call many many to come in and more The end point of our projection is if we are many. There is some other countries that cannot have our climate. We have to supply them. Kenyans called me recently. They want uh, 2,000 bells, which weighs uh, um, uh, is it 40 kilos per bell to be.
be supplied to them every week. Looking at myself, <laughs> you get it. But there is people on the road, people on the road. There's a lot of land doing nothing. You, you get it. So, you people, I'm really happy that I've met these people. Um, I really love these people. I'm really very happy. I'm very happy for the youth. This is where we are going to go. My motive, his motive, and his is to make sure that we, the young people, take over farming. We should just take off the mentality that Ugandans we have been having, that whoever is about to retire is ah, resorting ah. to go to the farm. <laughs> Yet he cannot <laughs> run a kilometer. <laughs> so my dear, <laughs> that frustration, because our old people have died. You should so come early. Uh -huh. Come you should early. These farms early. Old people have died because they are testing things that are really testing with their life. He doesn't know an animal. He yeah. doesn't know that animal dies because he bought it three million. He <laughs> dies. He also dies. <laughs> okay. Let me just wish you the best, you guys. Bye bye. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.